Ah, the Oscars. Hollywood's annual dick sucking contest where overpaid, overhyped and overconfident actors and directors fly in on their private jets and take to the stage in $10,000 dresses to pat themselves on the back and lecture the unwashed masses about the evils of capitalism, pollution and the dreaded orange man. Oh man. It's become a complete joke in recent years that the Academy Awards are a kind of crumbling monument to the hubris of Hollywood, a gaudy, irrelevant and kind of disgusting spectacle of excess and arrogance at a time when the average American is having to decide between food or heat in each month. And the only thing that managed to stir even a vague flutter of interest was watching Will Smith lose his mind and make an absolute clown out of himself a couple of years ago. Hope she appreciated you ruining one of the biggest nights of your career for her, bro. So from the year 2016, which is seven years ago now, <laughs> yes. y'all have been apart. Yeah. Anyway, I digress. The Oscars might be a spent force in terms of the wider public perception, but it is still a useful barometer for the current state of the industry. Because make no mistake, the movies that get nominated and eventually bag the trophy are carefully chosen to reflect what Hollywood values at that particular time. The speeches and the monologues and the little comedy bits that they decide to drop in give away little hints about how the industry views itself. And let's be honest, it hasn't exactly been a bumper year for Hollywood, which is still trying to recover from a disaster period of strikes and high-profile flops, the implosion of the lucrative superhero genre, a growing backlash against THE MESSAGE, an increasing public awareness of the corruption and generally shitty behaviour inside the industry, not to mention the prospect of a divisive election year and the dreaded orange man returning to the White House. <laughs> Were they going to come out swinging, or were they going to cower in a corner and retreat to their happy place while the rest of the world has its brutal way with them? Well, there was definitely some weird moments that left me scratching my head last night, like having John Cena walk out on stage butt naked to present an awards. Jesus, it's like some weird hazing ritual from an Ivy League university, except this is one fraternity that no sane person would want to join. Also, I think I speak for every straight man on the planet when I say that Sidney Sweeney absolutely should have done that bit instead. Then there was the elderly and clearly confused Al Pacino who stumbled through his best picture speech like he literally just got woken up and shoved out onto the stage with no prep time. Honestly, what happened to guys like him and De Niro? They used to be the most awesome and respected actors in the business, now they're just sad and embarrassing old men who should have retired years ago. On the plus side, Michael Keaton had a nice little moment with Danny DeVito. Still got it, bro. And since pretty much the entire world has jumped on the fuck Madam Web bandwagon, they even found a little time to join in. Without sound, we wouldn't have been able to hear such classic lines as you're gonna need a bigger boat, I'll have what she's having. And he was in the Amazon with my mother when she was researching spiders just before she died. Because when even the stars of the film are taking the piss out of it, I think you can assume it's safe for everyone else to do so too. Also, there was a decent little musical number from Ryan Gosling, which I think was Hollywood way of finally accepting the fact that Ken was the real star of Barbie, despite the movie's attempts to put him down in every possible way. Anyway, enough about that shite, let's talk about the winners and losers here. The three big hitters this year were Oppenheimer, Killers of the Flower Moon, and for some fucking reason, Barbie. SON OF A BITCH! <laughs> Now, in any sane world, a gaudy and narratively confused mess like Barbie would have been laughed out of the room as a gimmicky entry to court mainstream appeal, but this is Hollywood we're talking about here. For all I knew, it could just as easily sweep the awards and come out as the true champion of the night. Killers was probably a more serious contender, with a heavyweight cast, a veteran director in the sunset of his career, a ponderously pretentious runtime, and a central theme that aligns perfectly with modern Hollywood sensibilities. The only thing it lacked was mainstream appeal, because fuck me, not many people are going to sit through three and a half hours of Leonardo DiCaprio with Lockjaw. Really though, the most logical and safe choice was always going to be Oppenheimer. It was one of the biggest movies of the year, it had a stacked cast delivering great performances, a director making a welcome return to form, and a plot that was fairly light on partisan political lectures. And well, that's exactly what happened. Oppenheimer ended up bagging seven awards, including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, and Best Supporting Actor. And three more that no one cares about, 
like best cinematography, best editing and best score, making it by far the biggest success story of the night. And when I say it was a safe and predictable choice, I don't necessarily mean that as a criticism of the film. Oppenheimer was a good movie and easily one of the best of the year, but if this had been released a few years ago when Hollywood was still high on the smell of its own farts, I suspect they would have gone for something more obscure, more artsy, more diverse and more overtly political. There was some other welcome good news too, like Godzilla Minus One winning Best Visual Effects, which is fucking hilarious when you consider that it was made for a fraction of the cost of major Hollywood productions. Seriously, if that doesn't encourage studios to start trimming budgets and prioritising good storytelling and characterization over shallow visual spectacle, then I don't know what will. The only real disappointment for me is that it wasn't nominated for more categories. Like, how could it not get a nomination for Best International Feature? Nah, whatever. Ultimately though, it all felt like a very safe, very cautious kind of Oscars this year. A weirdly subdued, muted event from an industry that's been deeply shaken and humbled by financial failure and internal division, and maybe even a little frightened about its own future. There was none of the bombastic chest thumping of previous years, none of the strident political pandering that used to go along with every single acceptance speech and award presentation, none of the flamboyant excesses that turned regular people away in droves. Even Jimmy Kimmel's monologues were dry, tame and predictable, like he was terrified of offending anyone. Like, you know if you've really fucked something up at work and pissed off your boss, and you know he's looking for an excuse to fire you, so really, you just want to keep your head down and avoid any kind of attention for a while? Well, that's what this entire evening felt like. And you know what? I'm fine with all of that. Because quite simply, Hollywood deserved to be humbled. They deserve to be brought down a peg or two, and made to realise that audiences just aren't buying what they've been selling recently no matter how hard they try to shove it down our throats or guilt trip us into watching it. And maybe this really is the first outward sign that things are changing in the industry, that they've finally seen the way the winds are blowing and set themselves a new course. Maybe not because they want to change, but because they've been forced to in the face of absolute collapse. But fuck it, a win's a win at the end of the day, and with a little luck, this might just be the first of many. Either way, the drinker shall be watching them very carefully over the next couple of years to see that they make good on their promises. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.